What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fires, my man, Eric Sheets-Haber. We are going to be talking about Thursday's baseball slate, which, Sheets, I was surprised when I, you know, I, I had to take the day off yesterday. I would really appreciate you guys covering and everything. And I was surprised when I looked. Uh, I was like, what time am I going to have to get up in the morning? What's going to be the morning slate on Thursday? We usually get the, a bunch of, you know, the main slate has been the morning slate on a lot of these Thursdays. So I was surprised to have all the games stacked at night. At night. It's a nice slate. And we're going to be using SaberSim through TrueDFS to to go through our process after this is done you guys will see my core uploaded up there Rody will have his core up there and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm starting to do, and I'm starting to do more of that as well by the way yeah so so we want you guys to check that out and uh, again another encouragement you know check out saber sim through us and we're, we're you get all of our other stuff all of my plays all my bets all my early lineup builds which people have, have said were very helpful and uh it's a, a fraction more than what the, what they're charging at saber sim so uh, we wanted to use SaberSim uh, as, a, as a way of, you know, mostly going forward that we wanted to try and use this as, a, as our main page uh, for our early videos. Anyway, Sheets, how did, how did you do yesterday? And uh, what do you think of this slate? So obviously, if you were on, I mean, we would have both been all over Eric Fetty against the Dodgers. That was obviously, <laughs> that was the obvious play of the day. I, I, can't, I can't believe he wasn't 50 percent owned. Um, but uh, and that was actually the theme of yesterday. All these like kind of like really fishy pitchers putting up enormous, putting up good performances. So you, didn't, you really didn't miss much. Um, uh, I actually did pretty well in basketball um, and, and baseball. I just did uh, just did OK, but uh, I'm ready to attack today. And uh, let's just get going. I guess. Yeah, let's do it. OK, well, let's start with the first game. We got Colorado and Washington. And, you know, bear with us, guys. It's our, it's our first time using this sheet as for doing the videos. Obviously, we've used these sheets plenty of other times. I did. There you go. This is no problem. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So there. So, all right. So starting off with the uh, the pitching side of things, Sheets, are you interested in either of these guys? Um, I don't I don't think I'm going to end up getting there, but I, I just don't believe that Marquis is a bad enough pitcher to where we shouldn't at least consider him at 6,200. Um, and in the same breath, I feel like I could say, that about I could actually say that about Corbin too. I mean, there's been a there's been a well, I mean, he's definitely bad enough, but he has the occasional start. I mean, they're just cheap enough to where they have enough of a leash. I mean, Corbin pitched eight innings in Colorado against these guys, which he didn't do anything incredible. He only put up 15 fantasy points, but pitching eight innings in Colorado is a is a big deal. And getting to do it in Washington and and you know, decent pitching weather. I just think they're both like in play for me as sort of get weird plays. What about you? I like both of them actually. Um, I have um, I have five pitchers that I that I identified who I want to play today, and there are three obvious ones, and then there are these two. Um, I like both of these guys in this spot, um, and I also uh, I'm, I'm getting to uh, to some Washington as far as hitting goes as well. But I, I don't know. I, I I I this is one of those where I'd probably have to override ride my projections a little bit. I, I really think that Marquis is much is 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 a good pitcher. Um, mm -hmm. I think the Washington is not the greatest hitting team, mm -hmm. and Marquis is is stuck in stuck in like he's stuck in cores and he even pitches well sometimes in cores. And I, I actually think this uh, I think this is a pretty good spot for him. Um, I I would if I if I could just bet the under you know on one of the maybe maybe just under four point five runs for the Reds for the for the for the I was about to say the Redskins, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, for, the, for the Nationals. Um, uh, even if this over-under is nine, I mean, I see the implied total, 4.6, 4.3. If it actually is nine, I mean, I don't know. Like, Corbin is, every time I think to, to go attack him, I mean, he just, he's, he's got tricks, man. I don't know. Like, he, every once in a while. And, and Colorado, I just have this vision of freaking, of Charlie Blackman striking out four times this game. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, uh, uh, I, I actually like, like both of these guys. Um, so I like both these pitchers to pair with, you know, the kind of the three spend ups. And I do, and, and I do am getting to Washington as far as a decent stack. And I'm getting to Colorado as an okay stack on more in FanDuel. But I think right off the bat, I think this game is, uh, is pretty interesting. Yeah, I think that there, I, I think I've, it, this, is a, this is one of those you can play them all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like every aspect of it. Um, the one thing Corbin, why, why he's also appealing to always stack against is because he does give up so many home runs and he also gives up stolen bases. Um, so it just, it just, I don't mind if you want to go for it. I like the mini side of both stacks. Like, I mean, I think that you're talking for me, it would be like Daza, um, Gritchick. I, I don't know if I want these prices for Crone and, and Connor Joe, um, maybe Brendan Rogers, I would include. And then on the, uh, the national side, Soto is the obvious one who'll be really popular tonight. 
but uh, maybe you throw Nelson Cruz at 3,400 in there. And Soto, Soto is, I mean, honestly, Soto, if you're, if you're playing a cash game tonight, you, you better have one Soto in it at 40. If he's 4,700, I mean, that's just kind of offensive uh, against any even average or, or decent pitcher. So I think Soto is, is probably the best play on that side. Uh, maybe you could make an argument for Bell and, and, and Cruz as a mini stack, but probably looking at more mini stacks for me. And then we're going to get into some weather game sheets. Um, so we got Cleveland and Detroit. I am looking right now and I'm going to get a, an updated weather forecast here from my little weather, my little weather thing. And boy, um, there is definitely, there's definitely a chance something happens here, but I don't know if we can go with it as a sure thing. It just looks like it's going to be a lot of rain. Um, Assuming that it does go, you got winds blowing in 11 miles an hour. I think Scooble would be in play for me, even at a high price tag. But really, nothing else in this game stands out. How about for you? Okay, so first of all, um, talked a lot about weather in the live stream last yesterday. Actually, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did yesterday, there, there, this uh, Red Sox game against the White Sox, was um, was was in, in in a little bit of jeopardy, you know, whatever. And I just, I was leaving for the night, so I just decided to exit out. And there was another game yesterday that Philly Atlanta, I just didn't have as much fear over. So I basically was all over that game. That's why I was almost really killed it in baseball. I did fine, but uh, I really had that one. So I've been, I've been, I've been, I, I've been doing this last two years. I've been fading weather issues. I just, that's just what I do. Um, well, it depends it, on the weather issues, right? Like if you have a hundred percent chance of rain for, for seven yeah, hours. But, yeah, I get it. But, but, but yeah. my point is that even if it's like, you know what I mean? Even if I'm 30% or 40%, I mean, I just don't, I just don't like getting zeros, you know? Um, and, oh, and I, I got you. So, so I, so you're saying the opposite of what I, okay, I, I was assuming you were saying that you were, you were just going to say, I don't care about what the weather is. I, no, I exit that. out. Oh, gotcha. 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 <laughs> I, just okay, text I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anything's that great a play just to take a chance. Ooh, maybe I get this a low ownership because of the weather. Right. Uh, that's just not my, 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 yeah. Play. Like maybe if you, maybe if you're getting cores at a 50% that it plays you, maybe you could take a chance on some 5% cores or yeah, something. Maybe, like that. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so what's what's interesting here is that um, I, I I hope this game doesn't play because otherwise I have to do some homework because I'm getting I'm getting this 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 Plunkston guy as as one of the top point per dollar plays on the slate. Um, he's 4K, so I have to I didn't do any homework. I don't know if he was actually a real starter or whatever. Yeah, a real starter would be a stretch, but he definitely has the he, he there is a chance he could pitch into the I think there's I mean like things would have to really break right but he could pitch five yeah but yeah so that's so I want to do a work on that because I do have him as a top point per dollar play um which which if you have a competent if you have a pitcher with it has any hope and he's 4k he's always going to show up as, as a top point per dollar play at least right. it, because they're going to give they can't give him less than 10 12 points right and and that's and that's what he's going to end up being um so and not to mention that that he is going against Detroit and, and pitchers always get a bump against Detroit. So um, I'm going to do a little homework on that. But I think that uh, if, if I want to play, you know, well, like Dodgers and, and, and whatever, you know what I mean? Like you have to look the same somewhere or maybe you don't. But but he's he's something I want to do a little more homework on. I literally just have a, a name and a projection right now. I didn't really do any work on it yet. Right. Um, Scooble uh, doesn't quite make the list for me. And uh, and likewise uh, with this Connor Plington, I'm get I'm getting again it's just you know stupid projection based thing, but I'm getting a point per dollar uh, indication on the Tigers, you know. Um, so uh, I kind of hope the game doesn't play, so I don't have to deal with any of that issue, any of all that. Um, and the fact that it's orange or whatever it is, I, I'm just probably going to end up avoiding it anyway. But if you do see that this is going to be this is all clear, I, I think it's worth our while some time between now and six, do a little homework on where mm -hmm. this Plink Plinkton guy is. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know, I know who he is. I mean, just for what it's worth, this, the, the role he's been in has been the sort of the, the, the early man. Um, but I think if things broke right, there's an outside chance he could throw five innings. Okay. I think more likely you're looking at three or four innings. Okay. And the question is, do you want to have a, you know, a, basically a 15 point cap on your, on any pitcher? Um yeah, I, again, at point per dollar, you're always, the 4k guys are always going to stand out as long as they're not just pitching one inning. Um, so I hear, I hear what you're saying. I would just re, I would just encourage you to take maybe one more look at Scooble if you don't want to do it. I mean, this guy, like, you know, it's not like we have these 
awesome, awesome guys on this slate that we need to play. And by the way, Scoogle has been basically as good as anybody in baseball uh, this season, just in terms of raw fantasy points. I mean, his games, his last games, 19, 36, 26, 24. These are all DraftKings. Eight, 26, 24. These are pretty, pretty monster games, you know, for a guy we just sort of usually, oh, we don't want to pay nine, seven for Scoobal. Scoobal was the guy we played at, cheap, played at cheap prices because he was on his way up. But, you know, there were other guys like that going all the way back to Max Scherzer in Detroit and, and Justin Verlander when these guys were the worst team in baseball. And then before you know it, they literally had like the three best starters in baseball in a couple of years. Um, and Scoobal is not necessarily that, but he is a guy who's, you know, he's, he's gone from being a top prospect to being like, I think an elite level pitcher that I want to get ahead of the field on in general. And I think the price tag scares people. What you, what you just witnessed is something really awesome, by the way. So I was mentioning to, uh, to Bobby off offline that I updated, I uploaded our project, my projections to, to this, you know, to our site. And eventually those are going to just automatically populate into Sabres. And I thought it was going to, I thought I had done it before, but it, it, I didn't. So there was nothing here. And then I said, probably by the end of the show, you know, the Sabre Sim metric, you know, the, the, the matrix will grab it. It literally just flashed and refreshed right before my eyes without doing anything. Beautiful. And, and, and yeah, and all of a sudden the true DFS projection just got completely inputted alongside oh, beautiful. the Sabre Sim ones here. And that's one of the things, by the way, it's, a, it's a quite an easy shill, right? Uh, that, that, that we have is that, is that if you subscribe and you're part of the Sabre Sim package, you can get, um, you get their projections, which are really, really good. Or you can get the true DFS projections, which which are which are which are different. You know, they're they're more of an industry aggregate that has been kind of adjusted based on based on you know a couple of other factors. And you can choose which one, which one you want to go with if you want to use their optimizer. You could you could use just Saber Sims. You could use ours. You could average them. You could put your own in. And we literally just saw the true DFS ones just come up like right along the way. Yeah, I think it's a really awesome thing, and I, for what it's worth, I mean, between Saber Sim and 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 the 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 average and the, the and the, the slight slant you put on it sheets uh, for the true DFS projections, I think it really is like offering the you know as good a projections as there are in the industry. If and I would say the best, but I just don't want to you know you know we don't want to brag. It's a shame that they don't mean that much in baseball. <laughs> yeah, that's the only problem is in baseball, but but for pitching, I think it does yeah, come in handy a few times. And uh, the, some of the ownership stuff for the Saber Sim stuff has been more accurate than a lot of the other sites, and I. That's been helpful as well. And we get to another game where <laughs> this is going to be all pitching for me. Um, it, it would be no love for, for me in this Atlanta Philly game. Um, but I, I feel very nervous about this one. Um, I'm going to double check and see what the, the weather's actually, I mean, what we're, what they're actually projecting, because I think this is like a really dangerous um, spot. If this is so see scattered storms, um, stars of the Balkans forecast. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's 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 it, you know we'll have to wait till closer to lock. Right now, it looks like a dangerous one, but at the same time, I think Nola is the natural ace of the slate, and I think Kyle Wright deserves conversation in a similar mold to Scubel. Um, They both have had basically similar seasons. Uh, I like Scubel's matchup a little bit better than I like Kyle Wright, so I would put him a little bit behind Scubel. But I think Nola is clearly the chalk of the slate, and I think for good reason. If uh, if that's what you're going to do. Nola's, for what it's worth, for everybody who doesn't remember, Nola's issues with lefties. Atlanta doesn't have a whole lot of good lefties, and even the ones they do have strike out a lot. And Nola can struggle, sort of a little bit like the, the, the Garrett Cole thing. He goes both ways, you know what I mean? Sometimes they leave him in too long because he can throw so many pitches, and, uh, and he'll give up the four runs late or something, or he'll give up four runs early, and then he'll cruise. But he's basically always going to put up a number. And uh, so I have him as the ace of the slate. Um, how about you, Sheets? Where do you have this game? Yeah, so I have uh, Nola as one of the top three. Um, I it, uh, I have him ranked below Otani a little bit, but uh, uh, given everything, but I definitely have him as one of the top three. And I definitely do not have any of the hitting from this game on either side, actually. And I'm not getting to Kyle Wright um, um, at 9,900, mm -hmm. but Nola 9,200 is pretty uh, – it's pretty. It's listen. It's a juicy price, but then again, I mean, Atlanta. They 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 did me proud last night. I mean, they could they could they could swing, and that was that was without Acuna. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if he's playing tonight or whatever, but um, uh, yeah, I think Noah was one of the top players of this game. Yeah. All right, let's uh, jump on over to the Minnesota KC situation, which is going to make me have to get my weather thing. It's sixty degrees in Minnesota. We know that there's some 
some weird weather there sometimes. We've got Smelzer, uh, our guy from before. He's just gotten, they've got, got the price hike. Um, he was my guy last time because he was 5K. Um, I, I'm i struggling with this one because I, I think that you're going to see a lot of ownership and I like it, but I don't want to play the chalk stack on the slate that sort of feels like it's going to end up playing small, especially if the weather games come, come into play. Um, I, I, I guess that my, my natural thing is I like the top of, I like, I, I do like the, uh, the twins. And I think because of garlic's price at 2.2 batting third, they're going to, you're going to see a lot of ownership on the twins. I don't think you're going to see ownership on the Royals. And I think the situation is fairly similar for both teams. And while the twins have a better offense, I don't mind just taking a shot and flipping it around and maybe playing the Royals side of this um who no one's interested in so i have both sides of this game as being in play but the twins you got to know you're going to be eating a lot of chalk and the royals i don't think you're going to be having almost any chalk and i don't see the offenses as being as far apart as the run line in- indicates that's where i'm at yeah i have minnesota as more of a play on Vandal actually um I, I do have minnesota in the mix but i don't have them as one of my top three mm-hmm. and uh, if they're going to be you know chalky as a result of that i, I have no problem fading that um mm-hmm. Uh, I did not quite get to either of the pitchers here, and uh, that's pretty much all I have. Is this when Daniel Lynch burns me after I put him in my big one last time against the same team, and he put up 0.05 fantasy points, and then this time he bounces back with a big game? I, I'm happy to miss it. If, if I miss the Daniel Lynch game, okay, I'll miss this one. But but I would I do, I do want to encourage people to take a look at the things like this when you're trying to make your stacks. Like the Royals, like, is there, is there a big enough difference where one team should be 20 is 20%, 20 times the own the other side. It's basically never the case. So I think it's a really interesting spot. Um, obviously the, the KC lineup, not nearly as strong without, uh, without Santana. So I'm sorry, without, a uh, uh, Salvador Perez, but they do have power and speed with all their top three with wit, both wits, um, and Ben Attendi and Dozier. So maybe, maybe more of a mini stack, but I do like the KC mini stack. And I, I do think Minnesota is obviously a strong stack with garlic, uh, Buxton, et cetera. All right, let's jump over to uh, Milwaukee. St. I, I, I didn't even know this game was being played. I had so little interest in any of the components of this game. Yep. That when we got to them, like this one, did I forget? Did I forget to look at this one in my projections? But, and usually when you see that it's because you have two pitchers who are, who are pretty good, but not quite good enough to make the top of the list, right? So maybe overpriced, yeah. Yeah, they're they're good enough to keep the other team from scoring a lot of runs, but not good enough to be a good fantasy play to you know given the salary. And that's I think what we're getting here. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'm not really getting to either of these pitchers. I have nothing particularly awful to say about either of them. Um, so that means I'm probably not going to get to any of the hitting. Yeah, I think I think we're on the same page here. Um, I, I, I don't think there's a mistake. I don't think there's a problem with taking a shot with Lauer. It's, it's, it's getting to be consistent enough where I think you gotta, we gotta kind of like consider it a little bit again, it's sort of in the Scooble, uh Kyle Wright mold. I, I do think you can consider these guys as pivots off of the Otani Nola builds. Um, but yeah, not, nothing else for me in this game. I don't, I don't really have. And, and to make it also complicated, there's potential delays. Maybe there's some pop storms that could pop up in the middle. So all that stuff makes it like even less interesting. <laughs> so I'm very happy just to move forward. Um, let's talk about the White Sox and Red Sox. Uh, I don't understand why Boston only has, and I'm just double checking the weather. Why does Boston, I guess the, you know, 68 degrees, but that's not bad. 76% humidity. I, I, I can't believe a team against Dallas Keuchel only has a four and a half run total, especially a team like Boston. Oh, I mean, what do you want to give them? I mean, five and a half. Yeah. I mean, Dallas Keuchel, I'm just going to like tell you, he's, he's only pitching like por- por- portions of the game, but give up six in his last outing. Last time he actually pitched well against Boston last time, only gave up two runs against them. It says one, one good start of the year, but he's had an eight run and, and he eight runs with, with, with going one inning in, in a different game, you know, uh, three runs in five innings, four runs in five innings, uh, six runs in four innings. These are not t- things that would lead me to a total that's four and a half. And I just think that's like a really, especially against a really good, like, but I mean, okay, really good, maybe strong, but a good enough Boston lineup and a lineup that's actually, you know, caught, kind of caught fire. And I, this run total is keeping the ownership a little lower than I think it should be. And I'm just looking at your screen here and taking a, do you mind clicking on the, the batters for a second? Cause I'm curious where, where the hitters are going to come out. Um, 
yeah, I, I just don't see them being owned quite as much as, as, as they should be. I mean, these are, this is low ownerships for these guys. Um, so I love Boston here and Keiko used to be the guy who keeps it on the ground and all this stuff. He's not the same guy anymore. And you take a non-strikeout pitcher against a team that has a few heavy strikeout bats like JD Martinez, the Kike and, and whatnot. And I think that you can really comfortably stack Boston almost any way you want. You also get Dalbuck, huge strikeout guy at the bottom of the order, take away the strikeouts and what's going to happen. They lead to home runs. It just happens when you have these low, these guys who are like, you know, have, have these ridiculous home run rates when they put the ball in play. And uh, you know, it's again, you're taking a small sample and with Dalbuck, you're even going back to the minors and all that. I just feel like Boston makes a lot of sense to me as a stack here. And I think people are going to want to stack uh the other side, I think Tim Anderson and AJ Pollock are going to look really good. Um, I, I would say again, include Gavin Sheets. Uh, Yasmani Grandal has literally been like one of the worst hitters in the history of baseball this season. Um, I, I like both sides, but I definitely am siding with Boston. And I think Boston right now, I have them as lower owned. I'm not sure it'll really end up that way, but I, I think this is a really good spot to attack. Uh, yeah, I like both. I like uh, both uh, sets of hitters uh, in this game. I like both Boston and Chicago. Um, I have them both in the top. I have, I have the White Sox as one of my top three options, honestly. Um, and, and one of them only, um, one of them I'm Xing out, not Xing out. Like the other one I have was Washington, which I just don't feel like playing. Um, so I have wise, I have the White Sox as a really, really strong play. And I have Boston, I have Boston actually pretty good too. So, um, and, and on both sides on FanDuel and, and on DraftKings. Um, but I would say this, I mean, I wouldn't, let, let me ask you. So against, would you, would you put Boston um, against Keuchel? Would you play even up to get more runs than, say, the Dodgers tonight against Castellanos? I mean, I, I, the Dodgers are, should should be the favorite to score more runs every night, basically. So I only I only ask that because their their run total is only five point three. You know, yeah, yeah. If not, and actually, that's that that's the Sabres one. I mean, the actual Vegas right. odds have them at five point five. I think. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I actually think that they're you know the. But again, it's hard to get these guys in with the pricing if you want to pay up for pitching. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But 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 with but with Boston, you've got Kike at three point five, who you could mix in, and you've got Christian Arroyo at two point seven, which makes you know stacking the guys in between them who are the real top guys. Although I, I put Kike in that, but you just have lefty crushers everywhere. I mean, Kike, um, uh, Trevor Story, JD Martinez. These are just guys who just crush left-handed pitching, and 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 Xander is is really good, at, and Endeavors is one of the one of the better lefty lefty guys. So they just have a lot a lot to like. So is Verdugo, by the way, just really good career wise against lefties, not struggling this year. Then you've got Dahlbach down there. I just I feel like I could stack Boston a million ways, and they just have a little more flexibility because there's no Dodger under 4K, and uh, I mean depending on how the lineup comes out, of course. But uh, that's the only thing that I would say, and and then. You are in the dome in Arizona, but it, but it's close. I, I think Boston and LA are actually fairly close for me. All right, um, all right. What do you what are your thoughts on the Blue Jays and Angels here? Yeah, so now we're at the other uh, the other good pitcher here, and that would be uh, Otani. Um, I would also like to say that I mean I he's not going to show up in projections or whatever, but. But 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 you at sixty nine hundred is a little insulting. I, I don't know. <laughs> I agree a hundred percent. You know, um, you you know him a hell, obviously a hell of a lot better than I do from his time at, at, in L A. But without even looking at a strikeout or a prop or anything like that, I mean, he's just he's just shouldn't be sixty nine hundred. That that that's hashtag analysis. I don't know what else to say. Um, right. uh, Otani, uh, the, the same same as usual. You know, he's he's got a lot of volatility. He's got a lot of upside and. Um, you know, against Toronto, he can he can he can get lit up too. I think you know, um, but he's definitely showing up as one of the top three for me. Uh, good GPP play always. Um, I didn't quite get to Toronto, but I, you're not gonna you know, you're not gonna tell me to not play them. How about that? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's where I'm at. I, I probably will like him. Ryu is is something you're just gonna have to force in if you like him. You know, because you're, you're just not gonna get to him if you just run stuff. You're just gonna have to just say, okay, you know, I want, I feel like playing him, um, and uh, that's pretty much where I am. I'm not really getting any any of the uh, the hitting on uh, either side of this. Yep, um, I I played I played Ryu in his last start a little bit, and that felt really shaky at the time because he hadn't looked at at all like himself. 
And but it was against Cincinnati, so he he got away with it. And he put he put up a nice game. He put up 20 fantasy points without with only getting three strikeouts, which is a pretty pretty the, the one concern I have about him. And this is a tough lineup. I mean, Boston, I'm sorry, uh, the Angels are just are much better than they than they have been in the past years, and they they really have some some good bats in there. But personally, I I don't know, man. Like maybe this is getting too creative, especially like for the 777 or something, where you don't need to beat as many people. Yeah. But I think that Toronto makes a ton of sense. Um, this is the exact, like if this was a five game slate, I would be stacking Toronto as my main stack probably. But because we have some other good options and, you know, you don't necessarily need to get so far off the board. But I mean, Vlad, not only that, they're, they're, again, they're cheaper than they used to be. They're not, they're not everybody 6K anymore. They're expensive, but they're not, they're, you know, but no one's going to play them over the Dodgers and, and even the Bostons and, and the, uh, the White Sox and things like that. So uh, look, Otani has volatility. I, again, don't take short-term sample sizes with Toronto. They had a, they had some bad games in a row, all, all strung together um, and put up a good one the other night in a spot where I really liked them as my, as my hedge stack. Um, so I, I would say that uh, may, maybe even if you don't want to stack it, you can certainly take some bats here. They, you know, they scored eight runs the other night and uh, looked more like themselves. So I, I, I can see, I can see Toronto having an explosion game. Uh, 67 degrees in LA, a little bit of wind blowing out to left center. Feels like a, feels like a good spot to try and get different. So I'm actually going to put Toronto as my, my favorite uh, get weird stack, which is a great feeling because you've got tremendous power all throughout the lineup and a volatile pitcher on the other side. So, uh, and, and all, on top of that, Otani's big strength about it being a high strikeout guy. They've struck out a little more this year, Toronto, but they were, I believe they were third or fourth best in terms of uh, least strikeouts from their lineup. So when you take that away, it always sort of seems to mesh a little bit better. If you're not striking these guys out, how are you getting them out? Because Otani will give up bombs um, and he can get wild. So I, I, I do like Toronto a lot as a, as a get weird stack. So that's where I'm at with this one, I think. And I, but again, I'm going to play some Otani and I'm going to play some Ryu. Um, but I, where I'm not, I'm certainly going to try and attack this uh, at least even if it's just a one-off with Vlad or, uh, two man with Vlad and Springer or Vlad and Bichette. I do like this spot or, or T Oscar along with longs in that conversation. I, I think Toronto could be the sneaky stack that could win you all the money tonight. So now, all right. we, now we get to the third pitcher. Um, so Frankie Montas against Texas. Uh, he's showing up as a really, really strong play. Um, and then the good news is, is that, is that we don't have to worry about, well, not that we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about about whether or not to play a good hitting team against Martin Perez and get burned again because uh, he's not facing a good hitting team. Um, yeah, it's almost like we should be playing Martin Perez. I was going to say it's almost like this is the one we should play Oakland. <laughs> no, oh, that's funny. <laughs> but both, you know, same thing. Um, um, and that's might not be the worst idea in the world to play Perez now that I'm thinking about it. But uh, but Montas it's is unbelievable. Yeah. Like he's, I mean, yeah. this guy's putting up Cy Young type of numbers. He's but Montas is obviously, you know, one of the top plays. Um, I think you're going to have to make a choice between, well, Otani, Nolan, Montas. I think most people are going to probably play two of those three. I don't know exactly which ones, but um, I'm just eyeballing it. I can't – like, who do you – like, first of all, would you – are you going to play two of those three? Second of all, do you think the, you think the field is going to play two of those three? And if so, yeah. are either of them going to be more popular than the other one? Where do you think people are going to go? I think, I think Montas – I think, I think it's going to be almost evenly split between Montas, Nola, and I think by the end of the day, it'll be Nola. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's, it, they all have their own, their own yeah. things, but I, I think Montas, Nola, and Otani will eat up yeah. 130, 140% of the ownership. Right. Um, but, to, you know, for the two-pitcher site, obviously people understand what I'm talking about. But I mean, do you, I, do you, do you have a preference between those three? I like uh, – <sighs> I like Nola the best in general. I like Montas a little. I don't know. I, yeah, I think yeah, Otani. I'm with little, you. I'm with you. I, I don't know. I'm, a I, little I, bit. I, I have Otani on the outside looking in just because of my, my feeling about the Toronto lineup in general. Yeah. But if I had to just pick two pitchers, I think I would probably go Montas Nola. Okay. Um, but I don't mind it the other way, man. Like I, uh, <laughs> I just want to say, can I, can I just tell you Martin Perez's numbers right now? Like, yeah. okay, so he's got, he's had six, six straight quality starts where in his last six starts, he's, and those are, that means he's going six innings or longer, including a complete game shutout of Houston 
last time he faced them, which again, we see like, like he faces them out time. Uh, of course he goes out there and throws a complete game shutout. Not to mention he had a, he had a no hitter going against them the, the previous time he faced them until the uh, eighth inning. Uh, so he's given up a total of three runs and six starts. And all of those, most of those, the average innings pitched seven point seven and a third. Um, he's been the best. I mean, this sounds crazy to say out loud, but it's actually true. He's been the best pitcher in baseball after his first two starts of the season where they were sort of easing him in. That's really crazy. I mean, the best pitcher in baseball is a weird. Other guys are going, oh, well, this guy's got the ERA and this is that. Yeah, well, he had two first, his first two starts I'm willing to throw out and just look at it and go, oh my, I mean, this guy is on a, on a crazy high trajectory. And I, I do think he should be mixed into your, into your pools at the same time. And he also hasn't given up a home run this year. And this is why I, what I always say about him, everybody wants to stack against him. Well, show, show me, let him be, let him give up a home run sometime in his life before I stack against him. Um, but I certainly think that because of the prices alone uh, between noose, uh, noose, however we were supposed to pronounce it, uh, Pinder and Lowry, especially. And, and I guess you could throw Anderson into the mix maybe even Kevin Smith, it'd be really easy to get a stack together that doesn't need to score a ton of runs. Sean Murphy's even too cheap. There's just a lot of bats that you could use, but I probably will be using them as like one to three man combos just if I need the savings. Um, and I don't think that, well, I might, I might need to because I want to play the Dodgers in, in, in Boston, but I don't, I'm certainly not trying to target against uh, Martin Perez. I, I do believe some of what we're seeing is real. I don't think it's quite this to this level, but um, it is pretty wild that he's that he's getting this this kind of love. I mean, I, I'm sorry, this this kind of uh, he's just having an incredible season. Um, and Montas is a very streaky pitcher for a guy who's going to be really chalky. Um, he's really he's just he's he's very very good in real life, but he will give up uh, power. He has extreme he has an extremely wide range of outcomes in terms of his strikeouts, uh, as you can just game log watch and, and you know and know that about him um but if you looked at these two pitchers and you didn't say the name of who was who you might like you might like martin perez more than you like montas if you looked at this year's numbers um but i still think montas has tremendous upside here so i i i think this is a really close one i don't expect a lot of scoring in this game and i think both pitchers are definitely in play but i you know as of right now i'm I'm not targeting the hitting, but I'm, I'm, I know myself and I'm going to end up with some of these cheap o Oakland bats just because of their pricing. Um, all right. So we have the, we didn't, we didn't do the Dodger game, right? So the Dodgers got shut out at home last yesterday. By Arizona. No, on the road. Oh, that was in Washington. Yep. They went through going from Washington to Arizona in one day. Yep. That's, that's very bizarre. It's weird, um, and it's and it probably is not a great thing for our offenses usually. Yeah, but but I'll I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll try. Uh, they're my they're 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 still my top stack of the day. Uh, Dodgers then White Sox for me. Um, and uh, I just want you know just thank just thank them for getting shut out yesterday. That's that's the best I can describe it. Um, uh, maybe they won't be a hundred percent owned, but they probably will be. Um, uh, you can tell me who Roberto Castell unless he's one of those. One of those sneaky bum gardener guys or whatever who are going to give the Met, who are going to give the Dodgers trouble. I'll I'll be in on this one. So that that's where I am. I don't. I'm not playing Mitch White. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of with Castellanos at all. Um, especially with a bad bullpen behind them. Even though they've actually been better this year than they should have been. I'm just going to do a quick check on Diamondbacks roof opening. Um, because that is going to, it, I'm guessing, I'm 90% sure it'll be closed. Roof opening. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to take a quick look. And it is, because if it's open, oh boy. I mean, it's, it's a whole different game because it's got to be, it's going to be warm there all the time. It's, it's closed today. They're opening it tomorrow, unfortunately. But uh, wait till you see the Dodger run total tomorrow. I don't even know who's pitching for the Diamondbacks, but I'm guessing the Dodger run total is going to be crazy. Yeah, I love the Dodgers. I, I, you know, the travel and off of, uh, you know, or other than the, the last game of a pretty damn good road trip. I, I'm looking at early projections that being these guys being pretty low owned sheets. Um, I, I'm trying to understand. I understand what, how that could happen because of the pricing and people want to pay up for pitching. But maybe we say F it to some of these. These use use one of these top guys with maybe maybe your. Uh, Pilkington or something like that, or, 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 or we could play a, a marquee and uh, I don't know, Ryu kind yeah, of, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. I'm seeing them as the highest known on the slate. 
So. Okay. So yeah, I, th I think the projections are off a little bit, but I do think it, it's going to be hard to fit them all in. Like even when I paid double paid down at pitching, that's partly what won me the money the, the other night was to try to get the Yankees and the Dodgers in together is oh, that really was, tough. that was, that was with gray and the other, and the other, and the other, the other cheapo, right? Yep. Gray. Yeah. And uh, what's Whatever's his name? Yeah. And, and, and a couple of gray snails. I, I was able to do a little bit of it. But yeah, I, I do love the Dodgers, um, and I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be really popular. But I, I'm okay with it. Um, I have I have it the Dodgers as my favorite, but I actually think that because of the ownership, if we, if we do think it shifts to the, to that heavy, I would say Boston would be my pivot. Um, I think Minnesota ends up really popular, um, so I'm probably going to not do them as a full stack. I think that my, my favorite get off the board stacks are KC more as a mini stack but uh, Toronto as a full stack. I, 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 so I'm going to be mixing in some of the, some of this stuff, but the Dodgers and Boston are my two main ones. And if the Dodgers, again, if the Dodgers get too popular, I'm very happy to switch over and play Boston and, uh, and get the lower ownership there because I, I, they can't play all these guys. You can't play them all together either because they're just too expensive um, in terms of full stacks. So if you want to do a four, four, uh, unless you play the Christian Arroyo, Bobby Dahlbeck and Kike, which by the way, I don't mind. Um, but I would, if I'm going to be playing an eight hitter, I generally want that to be in a five man stack, not a four man stack. All right. Just for fun. So we're going to do a build, uh, using this yeah. time, the true DFS projections okay. using Saber Sim to do it. We're going to build it like a 150 max. So what that's going to do, just so you guys know, that is going to put the Saber Sim default sliders in such a way to maximize, you know, upside in these 150 max tournaments, you're going to get a core, you know, big correlation. You're going to get a decent amount of ownership fade and a good amount of variance, which is what sim precision is. Okay. But what we're going to do just for, just for Bobby, we're going to make one change to it before we run it. We're going to reduce the correlation a little bit. Okay. So that because what we keep correlation weight it is, you're just going to get like, as you always do, like billions and billions of five man stacks. So just for just 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 in Bobby's honor, we're going to reduce that one to five and we're going to keep everything else the same. And then we're going to just start a build and we're just going to see in a, um, a 150 max setting what percentage um, we would get. Now, again, it doesn't you know, it doesn't matter. This is going to change throughout the course of the day. Lineups are going to change. And what's cool about it, by the way, is that if I ran this exact same simulation again, I'd probably get completely different results. You know what I mean? And that's that's mm -hmm. what's. That's what's kind of cool about it. Um, okay, so uh, loading and all right. So what I we would be getting is not surprisingly sixty five percent Nola and thirty five percent Otani. And let's see, we can rank them by pitchers. Um, mostly these three guys, but hey, and your Perez, the Perez is the next guy. Yeah. Um, Aside from that, then you're getting to the uh, to the Plunkton guy, getting a little bit of Corbin, and then as usual, some sprinkles throughout. And with respect to what teams we're getting stack wise, actually they're getting the Phillies as wow. the as, as the highest owned. And, wow. and and again, the reason why this happens, right? When you're building it this way, it, it it takes into account like a lot of different things. You know, I'm actually surprised that. Well, and I I sort of know sometimes where Saberson's going to go, and let's just say that. Nola was like the top pitcher, you know, uh, ownership wise by a lot. It would end up giving me like a whole bunch of Atlanta. It just does. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But here, because I think the ownership spread out a little bit, you're not getting that kind of stuff going on. So it's getting Philly, but then you can kind of dig into this a little bit and see what types of stacks you're getting. So, so in five man stacks, the majority of the five man stack allocation is actually going to Kansas City. Yeah. Um, of everything. And then in the four man stacks, the majority of them are going to Philadelphia and as well as a three man stack. So part of the five man for KC also is because the pricing is affordable right. and they're, they, they're going to be off the board. And that's what a Saber, you know, we keep men mentioning this. Saber Sim is trying to build you contrarian lineups that will help you in tournaments. They're not trying to build you the most optimal who's going to score the most points right. the most often. And, 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 really and, and, and what ends up happening is look, I'm highlighting all the Kansas City ones. The other thing you met, you, you know, you, you alluded to is you have Carlos Santana at 2K. You know what I mean? Right. So that's going to just show up, you know, and then you have Nicky Lopez at 2,300. So right. that's going to make five minutes. And Melendez stacks. at 3K. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really easy. Gets I mean, it. Um, yeah. So again, and then what you can do, you know, is then you could go in and, and, and fiddle, you know, like if, if you, let's say that, 
you know, you, you don't want that. I'll give you an example. Let's, let's say you want more of, I don't know, let's say you want uh, more uh, Patrick Corbin, okay? So right now I'm getting uh, 10%. If you just put, put in 15% right here, right? It's automatically going to give it to you and redo all your lineups right over here. Right, right. So, so you have it. And, and then you can obviously upload them and, and fill around with, 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 with all kinds of stuff. So um, th that, is, that is literally like what I first start to do is, is, is mm -hmm. we, we, we talk, look, we talk about the slate and then we talk about it more at six o'clock. I run builds and then I say, okay, now that it started with this, what have I learned from talking to Bobby and talking to Discord and, and using my brain? to make that next all important step in figuring out how to put my own spin and my own takes on top of these baseline, you know, projections, you know what I mean? Um, and all, that is exactly how I, how I build, how I build my lineups. And, and if I'm going to do it, and if let's say I'm going to, for my big one, I'll probably hand build, you know, I'll probably say, okay, I'll go to my projections and say, what's my favorite stat? What's going to be low owned? What did Bobby like? And then I'll just kind of say, okay, I kind of like, um, Red Sox or whatever it is. And I'll just start with that. And I'll start with my pictures and I'll just kind of play around hand build wise. Saber Sim is good for, for me, it's really good for the multi, the MME stuff and the hand build stuff. I mean, I almost never just, just script and just say, and we, I, I see people do this. They'll run 150 lineups. Okay. I'll put the top one in my big buy and then we're going to go off. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, but the, the cool thing about Saber Sim is it builds lineups specifically for the, for if you want specifically for these lottery tournaments. And if you didn't want that, like for example, and then we're going to get out of here, you could change the whole nature of the build by changing these sliders. So now if I make it say a, a three max, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if it's going to even give me the same type of thing. I'm going to only build three lineups and I'm, I'm adjusting the sliders, which means it's going to be a, a little less ownership, a little less correlation or whatever it is. And I'm just curious what kind of stuff it gets. Um, um, while this is going, do you have any other thoughts on the slate? No, I think it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll throw out uh, real quickly. Uh, favorite one, one offs or small thing, uh, Soto, Pollock, uh, Kike Hernandez, JD Martinez, uh, Kyle Garlic is 2200. And then my pitchers are Montas, Nola, my favorite pitchers are Montas, Nola, Otani, Ryu. And then I'm going to be mixing in some Scooble, Corbin, Marquis, and Perez. And I know it's a lot of guys, but. I will have it more fine tuned by six Eastern. So of course, in your three max, we have Cleveland. <laughs> right. Like said, right. Didn't, even, didn't even talk about it at all, much less in the in in, in these others. So there's a Cleveland, a a a Philly KC, and another Cleveland. So hmm. something about Cleveland with respect to three max makes it makes it more viable in three max than it does in in one fifty. That that. Why that is, is something for people much smarter than I am, but that's just <laughs> kind of the way it is. Um, and again, if you don't like this, if you say, whoa, Washington, you're getting Washington, but I kind of like Marquis. Like, this is America. You, know, you, mm -hmm. you don't have to play him. That's, right, right. You know, it's just it's play somebody else. But um, I, hope that was, I, hope was, I hope that was a good way to kind of use Saberson to kind of integrate all this, at least in, in the early preview show. That's, yeah, I think that was a really good sheet. I think that was a really good way to explain it. And guys, let us know any other questions you have. We do have our little channel for SaberSim support. And uh, in general, I really encourage anybody out there who's not using this to take a look at it because it really, really, really is a valuable tool and it's helped my game so far this year. And uh, hopefully it will, uh, it'll help uh, one of our users win some more. We had, we had K9 with a big win last night and yep. hopefully we can keep it going tonight. So, so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be live at six. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when, when you stop recording, hang in there for, with me. Okay. All right. Well, good luck to everybody tonight and uh, somebody take something down.